The following is a presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars Baseball. Barrels that deep to left, and that will be in the pines, a solo home run. Live coverage of BYU Baseball is brought to you by doTERRA. doTERRA, proud sponsor of the BYU Baseball team. Now, for all the action, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Cougar baseball fans, on a perfect early spring Saturday, we welcome you back inside Larry H. Miller Field at Miller Park on the BYU campus here in Provo, Utah. As this afternoon, the BYU Cougars seek to snap a rare six-game home losing streak. BYU hasn't won a game at Miller Park in exactly four weeks. It was the season finale versus Houston back on March 16th. Since then, six consecutive home losses, including the first two games of this weekend's crucial three-game Big 12 series with the Baylor Bears. BYU losing in heartbreaking fashion last night, giving up a two-run lead in the ninth and falling in ten. My name is Greg Rubel. I've got your play-by-play today. And with first pitch just ahead, let's hear from BYU head coach Trent Pratt in our leadoff interview presented by doTERRA. doTERRA, pursue what's pure. And today, Coach Pratt talks about getting back to work with a quick turnaround after a stunning setback. Yeah, we get ready. A tough one last night, um, but it's over. So today's a new day, and we're going to go out there and, and get a win today. Did anything, anything sit with you on the drive home that was different than when you thought post-game last night? No, same. We just we got to play clean. Um, those guys, like I said, we those guys have been so good at the end, and we walked some guys, and then we did make a couple plays where we've been so good at that too, and it just too bad a hell happened in the same inning and the same night. Okay. Got to get one here, though, right? Yep. That's what it's about today. Hayden Kuhn will go out and start for us today, and man, he's been good for us, and we expect the same thing out of him. It's weird that uh, it's been consecutive home losses. Normally, that's not something that happens with this for this program. Yeah, no, we're good at home, um, and that that's the frustrating part is we have a big homestand, a chance to get on a run a little bit, and so, but we'll get back at it and start today. It's still a long homestand, a lot of games left in front of you. Yeah, and that's the key. Um, but the only thing that matters is today. The, we're trying to win the first pitch today, and nothing else really matters. All right, today you go to Hayden Kuhn. How would you describe Hayden's work recently? It's been good. Uh, he's a strike thrower, and we expect him to go out and he, he competes and go out and do the same thing for us today and give us a chance to win. How much do you spend time looking at the standings and where things are, what the goals are for this team here in this last month of conference play? I don't. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, the only thing, the only thing that matters is today's game. And if we start worrying about conference and everyone else, then we're not worried about today's game. So the focus is on winning a game today. Yeah. How's Brock Watkins looking to you now that he's back in the lineup? He looked good last night. Um, took a couple good swings. It just hopefully he can get in a groove and gets more at-bats and, you know, and gets a little boost in the lineup. You got Kuhio Aloy back in as a pinch hitter. That must mean his back's feeling a little better today. Or is he going to go? Yeah, he's in the lineup. Um, he said it felt better yesterday, so we kind of gave him off, didn't let him hit BP or anything. And, and hopefully, you know, it stays good. Judd worked on him, and hopefully it feels good today, and he's 100% today. That's trainer Judd Franson, and uh, probably the best home weather day you've had for a Saturday afternoon, great day for baseball. Yeah, another great day. A good crowd last night, and I expect another good one today, and we appreciate all our fans for coming out, and we'll go get a win for them today. All right, good luck in this one. Coach, we'll talk to you post game. Good. Thanks, Greg. That is BYU head coach Trent Pratt. Time now for today's starting lineups, courtesy of Big O Tires. Stop by your locally owned and operated Big O Tires location. Big O Tires, the team you trust. The visitors from Waco, the Baylor Bears, will lead off with the right fielder, number three, Enzo Apodaca. Hitting second, center fielder, number 23, Ty Johnson. Hitting third, left fielder, number 33, Wesley Jordan. Hitting fourth, the second baseman, number five, Daniel Altman. Hitting fifth, the third baseman, Number one, Hunter Toplansky. Hitting six, DH. Number 16, Zach Mazok. Hitting seventh, first baseman, number six, Cole Posey. In the eighth spot, the shortstop, number 13, Tyreek Kemp. Hitting ninth, the catcher, number 19, Cortland Castle. Starting pitcher for the Bears today, number 35, Colin McKinney. McKinney is a right hander with a 4.93 ERA. Jersey number 35 for McKinney. He comes in two today with a record of 3-3. Three and three. For BYU, leading off and playing left field, number 11, Luke Anderson. Hitting second, center fielder, number 26, Keone Painter. 
Hitting third, the third baseman, number 17, Eastern Jones. In cleanup, the catcher, number 18, Colin Reuter. Hitting fifth, first baseman, number seven, Cooper Vest. Hitting sixth, the designated hitter, number 33, Kuhio Aloy. Hitting seventh, the right fielder, number 13, Riker Herdsman. Hitting eighth, the shortstop, Brock Watkins. Brock wears jersey number two. Out of the nine hole, number five, the second baseman, Crew Robinson. And BYU starting pitcher today, number 40, Hayden Kuhn. Hayden is one and one on the year, getting his third start of the season. He's gone 19 and a third innings to this point in the year. He comes in with a very tidy and tiny 0.93 ERA. Hayden, like Colin McKinney from Baylor, is a right-hander. And Hayden Kuhn taking his final warm-up tosses on the hill. BYU in the white with royal caps, royal jerseys, white pants, and the Sailor Coog on the left chest. Baylor in the green caps, green jerseys, white pants with green pinstripes. And Baylor in block lettering across the chest for the Bears. It's gold lettering with white outline. Very crisp-looking green and gold combination for the visitors. And Enzo Apodaca digs in. This one's about to get underway on a sunny Saturday. And Hayden Kuhn comes inside at 90, low for ball one. Hayden Kuhn, three-pitch mix, fastball slider change. Fastball tops out in the low 90s. That was 90 for ball one. Two straight balls from Kuhn. And two straight 90-mile-per-hour offerings. Jason Harstick. He's today's home plate umpire. Matt Nieder at first. Jeffrey Hendricks at second. Daniel Jimenez. Last night's plate arbiter is at third. The 2-0. Three straight balls from Kuhn to open the count to Enzo Apodaca. Apodaca having a good series. Four for ten. It's on a 12-game hit streak. 3-0 from Kuhn. And does deliver strike one. Fastball on the inside edge on a take from Apodaca. Enzo, the former Gonzaga Bulldog, having more success this year than last year against BYU when he went one for 13 in a series against the Cougs, but he earns a five-pitch walk to open this game. Enzo earned a walk and was hit by a pitch last night. So lead batter aboard for the Bears here in the top of the first. Ty Johnson on an eight-game hit streak. Bats with Apodaca on board. Hayden opens the count with strike one. The call on the heater right down the heart. BYU turned one double play late last night after going eight days between double plays. That's a breaker low from Kuhn. One and one the count to Johnson. Ty Johnson batting 322. That number dips a bit to 306 with runners on. He's got a teammate at first in Enzo Apodaca who takes off. And that'll be hit behind the second baseman in front of Apodaca on the ground in the right field for a base hit. And two aboard with no one gone here in the top of the first. Apodaca had to wait for that ball to zip past him in the 3-4 hole. So Apodaca to second and Ty Johnson... Extends his hit streak to nine games with the first inning single and the first two aboard for Baylor. No one out in the top of the first. Wesley Jordan now bats after back-to-back left-handed hitters. The right-handed hitting Jordan. And he lifts that in the air deep to right center. Back into the track is Painter and watches it go into the pines for a three-run home run. Baylor opens on top 3-0. A walk, a single, and a three-run shot. Team leading sixth home run of the year for Wesley Jordan. 3 0 Bears. And Baylor has scored first in all three games in this series. And already action in the BYU bullpen. This game is four minutes old. Hayden Kuhn delivers ball one away to Daniel Altman. Wesley Jordan, the Navarro College transfer with his 
Sixth season and career home run. Fly ball high to left. Luke Anderson lost it until the very last minute there. He had his hands up. And then right before the catch, made a shift to his left and made the grab. So one gone here in the top of the first after Baylor scores three. The weather's 67 degrees, sunshine and winds out of the southwest at 5 to 10 miles per hour. So those winds are blowing out to left field. 3-0 Bears top one. BYU lost the opener 9-2 on Thursday. It lost a heartbreaker last night, 8-5 with a 4-2 lead in the ninth. And down 3-0 early in this one. That's turned on foul by Hunter Toplansky. He's in an 0-2 count on that ground ball foul. Toplansky a switch hitter, hitting lefty against the righty Hayden Kuhn. Toplansky second on the team in RBI, coming in two today at 23. Wesley Jordan is now at 22 with that three-run home run, and that's ball one, one and two to Toplansky. The Jordan home run scoring Apodaca and Johnson. The one-two goes to two and two. Big your pardon, that was a one and two and a swinging strikeout for Toplansky. So two out for B- Baylor in the top of the first. D.H. Zach Mazok started at the D.H. spot on Thursday. Didn't start last night. Came in as a pinch hitter late. And D.H. is today. In fact, the lineup today for head coach Mitch Thompson is the same batting order that he had on Thursday. Everyone in the same spots in the order and same spots on the field. Grounded back up to Hayden Kuhn. Fires over to first. And after the first three reach, the last three retired in order. But for Baylor, three runs on two hits. No errors, no one left on. We go bottom one, Baylor three, BYU zero on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Rubel. Bottom one here at Miller Park in Provo. BYU baseball brought to you in part by New Skin, your innovative beauty and wellness company that helps you look, feel, and live better. BYU trailing Baylor 3 0, bottom one. Baylor scored the first run on Thursday, the first run on Friday, and now the first runs, plural, on Saturday. And BYU, when the opponent scores first, is 3 and 13 on the year. Baylor, when scoring first, is 8-3 and three on the year. This Baylor team came into Provo with only one away win on the season. And they have doubled that to- total with two away wins in consecutive days here at Miller Park. Colin McKinney, power pitcher on the hill, right-hander facing Luke Anderson to lead things off for BYU and delivers fastball at 94 outside for ball one. Fastball in the 94 to 97 mile per hour range and does favor the heater. McKinney winds and fires and quickly gets a swinging strike on Luke Anderson, one and one the count. Luke coming into the day hitting 293, two for 10 in the series. Two swinging strikes for Luke. That was 95 miles per hour right down the barrel, and Luke missed it. One ball, two strikes. Colin McKinney, 3-3 three three on the year, 4.93 ERA, making his ninth start of the season. Has gone 34 and two-thirds. And has now gone 35 complete innings as he strikes out Luke Anderson after a 1-0 count, three consecutive swinging strikes, and Anderson is down on strikes. Keone Painter, BYU center fielder. Two for six in the series, doing a little bit of everything. Two for six with a home run, a couple of RBI. Scored twice, two walks, a hit by pitch. He's all over the line scores. He swings and misses at 95 again on the outside part of the frame. So McKinney's got that heater working in the mid-90s early. 0-1, the count, one out, no one on. Bottom one, three-nothing Bears. BYU trying to avoid being swept in back-to-back home Big 12 series. KU got all three against BYU two weeks ago. And Baylor looking for the sweep here this afternoon. One and one the count to Painter. Fouls it back out of play, one and two. 
The Cougs are indeed on a rare six-game home losing streak. It's been four weeks exactly since BYU's last home win. Cougs drawing more than 1,400 fans per home game. More than 22 last night. A top 10 crowd all time here at Miller Park last evening. They saw a good game. They went Baylor's way late. BYU took a 4-2 lead to the ninth. Gave up the lead for the first time this year. That's BYU's first loss when leading after eight innings. BYU now 14-1 leading into the ninth. That one loss last night. 2-2. And two consecutive balls. High and away. The last one got out of the kitcher's glove to the backstop. And this one high. Dragged down by Castle to make it a full count. 3-2. and two. Keone Painter batting 230. One home run on the year. It came in the opener against Baylor. And he works a six-pitch walk. So Painter will take his base. A one-out free pass issued here in the bottom of the first. Easton Jones now batting with a batter aboard. Easton's got a couple of streaks going. A seven-game streak of a seven-game hit streak and an eight-game streak of reaching base. Right-handed hitting Jones against the righty Colin McKinney. Keone takes his lead. That's called strike piped in. Top of the frame for strike one. McKinney with a high pitch count of 93 on the year, coming in with a 1.15 whip. That's very good. A strikeout to walk ratio of 2.67. The 0-1 to Jones. A check of first. A throw over. And Painter steps back. Jones, BYU's home runs leader with eight on the year, hitting 303 on the season. 0-1 to Jones. Checked it, but went through. 0-2. Easton Jones second on the team in batting average. Luke Anderson was first until a week or so ago. He's been dipping with the batting average. Reuter first, Jones second, Anderson third in batting average on this team, the 0-2. And again, I'll throw over to first to check on Keone Painter. Easton Jones in this series, three for nine with a double and grounded into a double play. The 0-2 to Jones, the Cougar third baseman. Took the barrel off the shoulder, but held it back. One and two. Easton Jones had been error-free in the field since February 24th. Until last night, he had two throwing errors, and both ended up being rather decisive in the outcome. It's one of those nights for a very, very good fielding third baseman. Ball high, and a Back pick try of Painter at first. He's back safely. Two and two, the count to Jones. BYU a losing record in day games. Eight and ten. Baylor also a losing record in the matinees at seven and nine. Two two to Jones. And swung and missed at a pitch way off the zone outside. So two gone for BYU here in the bottom of the first. Two swinging strikeouts. And that pitch had Jones really fooled. That was a good foot or more off off, off the plate. And he waved at it for strike three. Colin Reuter now bats. Two gone and one on. Bottom one, Baylor three, BYU zero. He swings and misses at 88 on the outside edge. Colin coming into today on a 24-game streak of reaching base safely. Throw over and, uh uh-oh, Keone Painter got hurt getting back to first. Looks like he's holding his right wrist. And trainer Judd Franson is out to check on Painter. Painter on the dive back hurt himself. And he closes his eyes and walks toward the dugout. Looks like he jammed that right hand into the bag, diving back to first. And so Keone Painter is leaving the game, replaced by Riker Scow at first base. 
Two gone here in the bottom of the first on an 0-1 count to Colin Reuter. A simple throw over to first, and Keone Painter jammed his wrist, diving back to the bag, and now leaves the game. So Riker Scow will take his place on the base pass, and we'll see what Coach Trent Pratt does with the outfield. If he moves Herdsman to center and Anderson to right and Scow to left, we'll see if that's the case here in the next inning. The 0-1 meantime to Reuter. High for ball one. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes that way. He could simply throw Scow in for Painter, but uh, more than likely you're going to see a shift of outfielders. Herdsman to center, Anderson to right, and Scow to left would be my guess based on past history. 1-1 the count to Reuter. Breaking ball stayed up top for ball two. Two and one to Collin. BYU's batting average leader, 327 on the year. Also leads BYU in slugging percentage, 561. Second on the team in RBI with 21. The 2-1 two to Collin. Fouls it to the screen. Count even at 2-2. Two and two. Two-two. Throw over to first again. Baylor has scored in the first inning in two of three games in this weekend series. Baylor's eight and three when scoring in the first inning this year. And a backward K on the two-two count. That pitch bit the outside edge at 88, and Colin Reuter down on strikes. So all three outs for BYU via the strikeout. The Big 12's leading team in strikeouts adds three, adds three more to its tally at the plate. We go to the top of the second. Baylor 3, BYU no score on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, top two here at Miller Park uh, with the injury to Keone Painter. The outfield shift has transpired as we thought it might. Riker Scow comes into the game in left. Riker Herdsman moves from right to center and Luke Anderson from left to right field. 3-0 Baylor top two. And Cole Posey, who's had a great series, takes strike one. Posey five for nine with five runs and three RBI, including a home run. It was a solo shot in the second inning last night. Gets behind 0-2 and lost the grip of the bat as well as it flings out onto the field to play about 10 feet. He'll re- retrieve that in an 0-2 count. BYU struck out three times in the uh, top of the uh, bottom of the first. Now 195 Ks on the year. Houston second at 149 in the Big 12. So BYU well out in front in Kaying at the plate. A check swing and a hold back from Posey. 1-2 and two the count. BYU coming into the day 6 and 11 in league. Baylor 7 and 7. The 1 2 from Kuhn is low. Count goes to 2 and 2 on Posey, the first baseman. Has nine hits on the year, but nine RBI on those nine hits, and he's really heating up as the weather warms up. 2 and 2 to Posey. And that's slapped opposite field, and it's going to bloop and drop in. And maybe two bases for Cole. And he will have a stand-up double. Just popped it over the head of the first baseman. Landed about three yards fair. Rolled foul. By that point, Posey was on his way to second base with a double to lead off the second. And pitchers are up and busy in the BYU bullpen as Hayden Kuhn got into trouble immediately in this game. In the first inning, a walk, a single, and a three-run home run to put Kuhn and the Cougars down three zip. He got the final three outs in order in the first. But lead batter aboard here in the second. Cole Posey now 6 for 10 in the series. He's at second base as Kuhn misses with 91 mile per hour outside fastball. 1 0. The green, gold, and white Bears, the royal blue and white Cougs today. The 1 0. There's a strike. Right down the pipe, 91, or one and one the count. (laughs) 
Miss away. Two and one. Tyreek Kemp is the batter. Kemp at 193 has been under 200 since March 17th. So he's been a month under the Mendoza line, but heating up as he's three for four in this series. 2-1 and drills that to right. And that will be another Baylor home run. A two-run shot after a three-run shot in the first. Five-nothing Bears. That was 103 miles per hour off the bat. 419 feet to right. And five-nothing Baylor is on a pair of shots here at Miller Park. Portland Castle out of the nine hole next to bat and swings and misses 0-1. Tyree Kemp with his first home run as a Baylor Bear. 5-0 Baylor early here at Miller Park. Grounded foul, 0-2 as Kuhn gets ahead. BYU pitchers in the pen have uh, ceased throwing for the time being. Still no one out here. Top two and two crooked numbers for Baylor in the first and second innings. The 0-2. High, 1-2. and two. Three-run home run in the first, two-run home run in the second. Baylor had just the one home run through two games coming in two today. 24 home runs on the year, now to 26. The 1-2, and it hit him. So Hayden Kuhn dealing with base path traffic early. And now pitchers back up. Boston Mabius, the left-hander, is warming. On a very pleasant day with a very unpleasant beginning for BYU so far. Cole Posey leading off the second with a double. And Tyree Kemp bringing him home with a two-run shot to deep right field. That's 419 feet to right. And ball one as Kuhn misses down and away. BYU's been looking for a game three starter, and they've gone to Kuhn the last couple of weeks. Mixed results, and this one's not helping the resume at this point. Grounded to first. They'll go to second for one. Whoop, no, they'll call a foul, actually. back. They'll say it fouled off the plate. So they'll bring it back and make it... Runner on and no one out. So Castle was hit by a pitch at first base. Enzo Apodaca is the batter in a 1-1 count on that ball ruled foul, though it went into the field of play. That's a base hit to center field. First and second, no one out. And Hayden Kuhn has allowed the first four to reach here in the second after allowing the first three to reach in the first. And his day is likely not going to last long. A mound conference with the battery and the infielders. The first inning began with Kuhn walking up Odaka, giving up a single to Johnson and a three-run shot to Jordan. Cougars got out of the inning. And then here in the second, double by Posey, two-run shot by Kemp, hit by pitch of Castle. Then Apodaca singles and pitching coach Abe Alvarez out to visit with Hayden Kuhn. This game is 5-0 Bears, and they have two on and no one out in the second. And that was a short stint for Hayden. One inning did not get out of the second. We'll see a PC printing pitching change in a minute on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Hayden Kuhn came into the day with a 0.93 ERA. That ERA elevated today. Hayden goes an inning into the second, didn't get it out. And gives up five hits, five runs, all earned. A strikeout and a walk through 33 pitches. His day is done. And Boston Mabius enters the game on a PZ Printing pitching change. It's brought to you by PZ Printing. Nothing inspires like print. 
Maybe it's making his 11th appearance all out of the pen. Boston a 2-0 record this year. Got the win at Utah, I believe, on Tuesday. A 10.12 ERA for Boss. 10.2 innings pitched on the year. He's given up 15 hits, 12 runs, all earned. Walking 10, striking out 15. Batters hitting 349 against him, which is second highest among... Actually, really, it's his highest among the regular pitchers now on the roster because uh, Brett Hansen had a higher average against, but he only threw an inning and two-thirds, and his year is done. So Boston looking to lower that batting average against number as he checks in. The left-hander, Boston Mabius, comes into a 5-0 game. Inherits two runners put on board by Kuhn. Kuhn allowing the first four batters to reach here in the second after allowing the first three to reach in the first. 5-0 5-0 Bears. On second is Castle. On first is Apodaca. Keone Painter injured a hand injury, diving back to first base on a pickoff attempt. And his day is done. Painter's place taken to the field by Riker Scow. Painter was playing center, so Riker Herdsman now in center. Luke Anderson in right, Scow in left. BYU infield at double play depth. No one out. Top two, 5 nothing Bears, and 0-1 count. By the mean, on a bunted attempt foul. And now a bunt down by Johnson. Over to second for one and just one. So over to third is Castle. Forced out is Apodaca. On the 1-6. And double play not able to be turned there. The uh, three, uh, five, six, I should say. That was Jones handling the bunt attempt. And over to third on the play is Castle. So runners on the corners in one out now. Johnson reaching on a fielder's choice. He's at first for Wesley Jordan. Jordan with a seeing eye base hit to left will bring home another run. First and second, one out. Scoring on the play is Cortland Castle. Jordan. Has his fourth RBI of the day. Had the three-run shot in the first. Now an RBI single here in the second. Three in the first. Now three in the second for Baylor. Six-nothing Bears. Six runs on six hits. We're still top two. So Jordan, the RBI single to left. He's on first. And Ty Johnson reaching second on the play. 0-1 to Daniel Altman. Baylor bats coming alive here in Provo. Of course, they had been hitting it well. Coming into the series, they were hitting 300 over the last 10 games. They've kept the good good vibes going. As maybe this gets ahead 0-2 on Altman. Ground ball to first. Trying to get a reverse double play. Safe on the second. They got one at first as Vest made the play to retire Jordan. Making it to third on the play is Johnson. And the fielder's choice reach for Altman. He's trying to go one, trying to go 3-6-1, 3-6-3 for the double play. They got one. And so a couple of force outs for the two outs in this inning. Apodaca forced out after singling, and Jordan forced out after singling home a run. 6-0 Baylor, and still runners on the corners. Now two gone for Hunter Toplansky. Toplansky, the eighth batter here in the second inning for Baylor. And takes a called strike one on the outside edge at 91 from Mabius. No balls, one strike, two out, two on. Johnson on third, Altman on first. Southpaw Mabius from the stretch. Breaking ball stays high, one and one. Seven consecutive batters reaching first base, two of them via fielder's choice, mind you. That said, everyone at the plate is getting to the first base bag and staying on the path. One and two on a foul back away. 
Posey a double. Camp a two-run shot. Castle a hit by pitch. Apodaca a single. Johnson a fielder's choice. Jordan a single. Altman a fielder's choice. Add it all up, and you got three runs in. Three runs on four hits to this point. After three runs on two hits in the first inning. Six nothing Bears, top two. The one two. Missing high and away. Two balls, two strikes from Mabius to Hunter Toplansky. Toplansky batting 291 on the year. That number dips a bit to 273 with two gone. And there are two gone here in the second. Runners on the corners. Fouled out of play down the right field line. Toplansky struck out swinging in the first inning. His 35th strikeout of the year. That leads all Baylor batters. 0 for 10 now in the series is Toplansky. He's the one guy in the batting order without a hit. The only one this weekend for Baylor. Taken off on a ball in the dirt is Altman. He'll go to second. So to second on a wild pitch, we'll call that. And the count goes full meantime. First base now clear with a full count and two gone. Two on, top two, six-nothing Bears. And Toplansky is walked. Switch hitter was going righty that time against the lefty Mabius after hitting righty against the lefty against the righty Kuhn to open the game. Toplansky walks and now is 0 for 1 on the day with a base on balls. Ninth batter of the inning is Zach Mazok. Every batter has gotten to first base in this second inning. Holding back on a called strike. Breaking ball in at 83 for strike one on Mazok. Whether it be a hit, a hit by pitch, a fielder's choice, or a walk, every batter has been to first base here in the second inning. Two gone, and now bases loaded for Baylor on a foul away. 0-2 the count to to Zach Mazok. Baylor batting 347 with the bases loaded, 17 for 49 on the year. One and two. Chase pitch away from the left-handed hitting Mazok, the DH. One for five in the series. 0 for 1 with a strikeout as a pinch hitter last night. Fisted back out of play. Two and uh, one and two, the count remains. Three in the first, three in the second for Baylor. Six nothing Bears. Baylor is 13 and 1 on the year when they score six or more. BYU 2 and 13 on the year, allowing six or more. It's already 6 nothing. Swing and a miss. BYU's out of the second. Nine come to the plate. And Baylor plates three runs on four hits. There were no errors. And three were left aboard. We go bottom two. Six nothing Baylor on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. For more Cougar baseball, let's rejoin Greg Grubel. BYU baseball presented by doTERRA. doTERRA is a proud sponsor of the BYU baseball team. You go bottom two. Cooper Vest will lead things off for BYU. Just BYU's fifth batter of the night, the day. Baylor bringing 15 to the plate through innings one and two. We're bottom two and six nothing Bears. Colin McKinney delivers fastball away for ball one. Cooper Vest. 246 hitter on the year. That number jumps to 419 when leading off. And Coop leads off the second, taking two straight balls. Coop in the series, one for seven. His one hit is a solo home run. Came in the second inning on Thursday. We're now in the second inning on Saturday. BYU down 6 nothing, and Coop turned on that and cranked that deep to right, but foul. Two and one. That was 109 miles per hour off the barrel, but foul. 2-1. Breaker stays high, 3-1. Colin McKinney, long outing of 6 and a third. 
He's into his second inning of work. Has thrown 24 pitches. The 3-1. A healthy hack there from Cooper Vest. And swings through a 94 mile per hour up in the zone fastball. Count is full to Coop. BYU's first baseman has reached base in 10 consecutive games. Coming in two today. Make it 11. Takes his base. Ball four high. Kuhio Aloy, the DH. Batting right-handed against the right-handed throwing Colin McKinney. Kuhio. Still BYU's RBI leader on the year. At 24 for the season. Bats with Cooper Vest on first and no one out here. Bottom two. Cougs on the comeback trail. Breaking pitch stays on top of the zone for ball one. Cujillo does have hits in seven of his last nine games. In this series, he's one for four. The walk and a strikeout did not start last night. Came in as a pinch hitter late. Dealing with some uh, back soreness. Kept him out of the starting lineup, but came in late. And now gets the start today. Mound visit. Pitching coach James Leverton out to converse with Colin McKinney. BYU gets the lead batter aboard here in the second. Trailing 6-0. And the Cougs have been playing catch-up to begin games. It was only a 1-0 lead in both the first and second games before the Cougars equalized and went ahead in both, but lost the lead in both games. BYU led 3-1 on... Or led to 2-1 on Thursday. Ended up losing 9-2 as Baylor scored the last eight. BYU last night... Led 4-1 at one point. Baylor scored seven straight, and then BYU the last one in the bottom of the 10th to make it 8-5 your final. Meantime, Cujillo takes the third straight ball, 3-0. Cujillo Aloy batting 277, 238 with runners on. He's got Cooper Vest on first. Cujillo flipped the bat as if to walk to first, and was called strike one. Fastball biting the upper inside edge of the frame to make it a 3-1 count. 3-1. There's the walk. Took five pitches. Back-to-back walks issued by Colin McKinney to lead off the second. Vest to second. Alloy takes his base, and Breiker Herdsman began the game in right field, now playing center field with the injury to Keone Painter. Herdsman fouls it back to the backstop. It'll be no balls and a strike to Breiker. Breiker got his seventh start in right field when the game began, but he's back to center. 0-1 to Herdsman, the Utah Tech transfer. Right-handed hitter, right-hander on the hill. Ball two up top, ball one up top, pardon me. One and one the count. Breiker in this series, one for six with a run scored in an RBI. Last eight games hitting 375. The 1 1. 2 and 1. Fastball up top and outside. Two balls, one strike to Breiker Herdsman. Vest, a leadoff walk. Kuhio Aloy follows him with a walk. Two on, no one gone. Bottom two, and Breiker fouls back out of play. Two and two the count to Herdsman. Four home runs on the year, seven on the career. On deck is Brock Watkins. He has 12 career home runs. Homerless on this year. And again, Brock just getting back into the swing as he missed a month due to injury. Getting back-to-back starts for the first time since March 7th and 8th. The 2-2. Again, fouled away. Breiker getting a piece of a 93-mile-per-hour Colin McKinney fastball to foul back and away. Softball in Norman today, trailing Oklahoma 6-1, to one, bottom five. Fastball high, count full. 
no one up down in the Baylor bullpen, but uh, that may not be the case for long. Certainly if McKinney loses Herdsman here, full count. Two on, no one gone. And again, a foul away as Breiker battles off another fastball. BYU with just a day off between games. They'll have Utah Tech in here on Monday. The forecast not great for Monday right now, and technically Tuesday could be an option if they wanted to go that route. Grounded a short. Flipped to second for one, over to first for two. And a 6-4-3 DP, one of the best double play turning teams in the country, the Baylor Bears, get their 34th twin killing of the year. A top 10 team in double plays per game. It sets Cooper Vest at third, but now with two gone as Aloy is raced on the 6-4 of the 6-4-3. And now Brock Watkins will bat with one aboard and two gone. BYU still looking for its first hit of the game. The Cougs have earned three walks. But no one across the plate yet. 1-0 to Watkins. Popped up into short right field. First baseman Posey back. Apodaca coming in. Second baseman Alton over. And Altman calls for it and makes the catch. So first two batters reach on walks. And then a 6-4-3 DP and a pop up to second. And that'll be it for BYU in the second. No runs, no hits, no errors. And one left aboard. We go to the third. 6-0 Bears on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Baseball. Here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU Baseball brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue. Bam Bam's perfectly smoking each cut of meat just for you. Come on in and enjoy Central Texas Barbecue right here in Provo, Utah. Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. Our top three in Boston, Mabius stays in the game for BYU on the hill in relief of Hayden Kuhn. First batter, Mabius faces. It's Cole Posey. Posey led off the second with a double, scored a run. He now leads off the third. Posey 6 for 10 in the series. 6 for 10 with 6 runs, 3 RBI. His hit streak is now 5 games. Fouls it back, 1-0-2 oh, to Posey. Left-hander maybe is on the hill. Posey the right-handed hitter. Batting 278. Cole Posey opened up the season 1 for 17 at the plate. He's since gone 9 for 19. The 1 2, fouled back to the backstop padding, 2 and 2 to Posey. Cole Posey, the first baseman, hitting 7th in the order. And coming in 2 today, the 7, 8, and 9 spots that accounted for 9 RBI for Baylor. And they've added 2 more with that 2 run home run by Kemp. Along with three runs scored, all out of the seven, eight, nine holes. Curveball in. Looked to be in for strike two, uh, three, but no, it's called ball. Ball two. Two and two the count to Posey. That was a really nice bender by Boston. Maybe has thought it settled in top of the frame for strike three. Not the case. Two and two. Fastball high, three and two. They appeal at first, and it'll be a full count. Yeah, the back-end hitter is doing a ton of damage for Baylor in this series. They've accounted for 13 hits. It's lifted in the air to right field. Anderson on the run into foul territory and makes the catch there, deep in right field. So one gone. Cole Posey flies out to right. Luke Anderson began the game in left. Is now playing in right as Herdsman went right to center. Scout came in at left, and Painter left the game with a hand injury suffered on a dive back to first base in the first inning. Tyreek Kemp will now bat. Kemp, two-run home run. In the second, he's now four for five in the series with five RBI. Another back end of the order hitter just doing damage against BYU. Posey, the seven hitter, has six hits. Camp, the eight hitter, has four. 
And Castle, the nine-hole hitter, has three, along with three RBI. Foul back out of play. 0-2, maybe it gets ahead of Kemp. We're top three here in Provo. 6-0 Bears. Baylor 6 and BYU no score. Baylor 6 runs on 6 hits. BYU no runs on no hits. No errors either team. No balls, 2 strikes to Kemp. And by the way, Tyreek Kemp is now above 500 for the first... uh, Above 200, pardon me, for the first time in four weeks. He was under 200 since March 17th. He goes above the Mendoza line with a two-run home run. And now hitting 202 for the moment as he fouls back to the screen to go to one and two. The count remains one and two with one gone, no one on here, top three. And Kemp in the series is four for five with five RBI. Two extra base hits. Rather, one extra base hit, that home run in the second. One ball, two strikes. It's the shortstop, Tyreek Kemp, left handed hitter against the lefty Mabius. Curveball stayed up top. Two and two. Sixty-nine degrees on this sunny Saturday here in Provo. Two-two from Boston, and got the punch out. The backward K caught looking barrel on the shoulder. Kemp is retired, so two gone here in the third. BYU put the lead batters aboard in the first and the second. Gets the first two gone here in the third. In the first inning, the first three batters reached safely. In the second inning, the first four batters reached safely. And no one yet to yet to reach safely here in the third. Six nothing Bears. Cortland Castle. Grounder up the middle, backhanded by Crew Robinson and not handled cleanly. Reaching first on the play is Castle. Would have been a tough play to make as that was deep in the hole at second and. Robinson would have had a backhand pirouette and fire. Might not have got him anyway. We'll see what they judge that to be. As it was a ground ball back up the middle. Maybe just took a swipe at it. Robinson backhanded it. But the ball popped out of his glove. And they'll call it an infield hit. So third consecutive inning with base runners for the Bears. And another hit out of the back end of the Baylor batting order. The seven, eight, and nine hitters today have three hits already after coming in with 11 on the series. The 0-1 to Enzo Apodaca, leadoff hitter. And that'll be an opposite field base hit slap into left. First and second with two outs. So two out hitting now for Baylor. A fly out and a strikeout to begin the third. Now a single by Castle and a base hit by Apodaca. And for Enzo, that's his sixth hit in the series. Six for 12. So many Baylor players with exemplary numbers in this weekend series. And Apodaca, the latest, he's Baylor's offensive leader in playing like it, leading Baylor in hits, runs, RBI, batting average, total bases, you name it. And now on a 13-game hit streak in a 6-for-12 series for the former Gonzaga Bulldog. He struggled against BYU last year, 1-for-13, flipping it around to 6-for-12 this year against BYU. 0-1 to Ty Johnson, meantime. Johnson, the... Number two hitter in the order is the fifth hitter in the inning. And takes called strike for 0-2. Ty Johnson's hit streak is nine games after his single in the first. So Apodaca on a 13-game hit streak and Johnson on a nine-game hit streak. The one-two hitters for Baylor. Just what you want out of those positions, those kinds of streaks. It's fouled in the batter's box. It'll be 0-2. The count holds. With two gone, two on. Castle on second, Apodaca on first after back-to-back two-out singles. That's eight hits now for Baylor. Six runs, eight hits. BYU no runs, no hits. This game is really slow pace with all the offensive fireworks from Baylor. That'll be a ground ball to Crew Robinson at second. Over to Vest at first. And on the 4-3 ground out, BYU out of the third with no damage done. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two left to board. We go bottom three, Baylor six, and BYU zero on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Cougars baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Athletics would like to recognize Planet Rentals for being today's game sponsor and thank them for being an important part of our team. Enhance any party, event, or wedding with Planet Rentals. Baylor 6 and BYU no score. We go bottom three. 
Cougars kept Baylor off the scoreboard for the first time in the third inning. Baylor scored three in the first, three in the second to take the 6-0 advantage. Crew Robinson. Will bat for the first time today. Everyone in Baylor's batting order has already hit at least twice. Two batters have hit three times, and Cruz hitting for the first time today and pops it up into foul territory down the first baseline. And to the top row of the grandstand. And the ball is thrown back in. You don't always see that. But there comes the ball back into the field to play. Wasn't like it was an opponent's home run. I said that's called a souvenir for your day at the ballpark. The guy didn't want it. 0-1 to crew. And 0-2 on a call strike. Change up top of the zone. 0-2 on the take. Fastball and a swing through. 94. Robinson down on strikes. For Cole McKinney, that's strikeout number four. So he's one time through the batting order. Has struck out four. Issued three walks. Has yet to give up a hit. Cole McKinney and the Bears out to a 6-0 lead. Back to the top of the order for the first time. Luke Anderson struck out swinging to open the game. Takes the barrel off the shoulder. They appeal and get a called strike at first from umpire Matt Nieder. Matt Nieder at first. Jeffrey Hendricks at second. Daniel Jimenez at third. Jason Harstick is today's home plate arbiter. No balls and a strike. One out, no one on for Luke Anderson. Fouled out of play down the left right field line. 0-2. So again, McKinney gets ahead. Jersey number 35 for the right-hander. Of Nassau Bay, Texas. Colin McKinney gets his second strikeout of Anderson and his fifth strikeout of the day as he blew 93 past him. A swing and a miss. And Luke, a two for 12 series. Strikes out for the second time. Swing is being in as many plate appearances. And now Riker Scow batting in the place of Keone Painter. Painter left the game with a hand injury. And Scow taking his place in the batting order. It did require some outfield shifting. With Scow going to left. Painter leaving the game. Anderson going to right. And Herdsman going to center. 0-1 to Painter. So McKinney's faced 10 batters and struck out five of them. Four swinging, one looking. 0-1 to Riker. That's fastball missing low and away. One and one the count. The 1-1. Again outside of the right-handed hitting scow. Two balls and a strike. Opposite field, high in the air into right field, into foul territory. Apodaca makes the run, but it'll bounce just shy of the bullpen. The Baylor bullpen, two and two the count, two gone, no one on. McKinney's three outs in the first, all via the strikeout. Did not get a strikeout in the second inning, did get a double play behind him. And here in the third, strikes out the first two batters he faces. So five Ks for McKinney. Colin putting the K in McKinney on this sunny Saturday. 2-2. The count, two gone. Base is clear. Foul back away. We'll stay 2-2. Two two. The highest scoring inning for BYU this year is the third inning. We're in the third inning. Cougs have scored 30 in the third. But nothing yet in this one with two gone. It's in tight. It fills the count at 3-2. BYU 2-3 and three on Saturdays. Baylor 4-4 four and four on Saturdays. A walk of Scow with two gone. So five strikeouts for McKinney, but he has walked four batters. So a little bit of everything from McKinney. 
bodies in the Baylor bullpen, but uh, nobody up and warming on this pleasant Saturday afternoon. Seventy degrees, wind of five to eleven miles per hour now out of the west. So more to center left center. The batter's Easton Jones with a man aboard. Two gone here in the third. See if the Cougs can keep the third inning as their highest scoring inning of the year. Maybe plate a run or two and get back in this one. Six nothing Bears, bottom three here at Miller Park. Six runs, eight hits, Baylor. No runs, no hits, BYU. They have had base runners via the base on balls. Hit them. Speaking of that, it's a hit by pitch. First of the day for McKinney. First and second now for Colin Reuter. That's the way to get back in the ball game is put men aboard for Colin Reuter and his five home runs on the year. So Easton Jones hit by a pitch. Takes his base. That's his second HBP of the year for Jones. Scow goes to second. So first and second, two out. BYU 0 for 2 with two outs today and Baylor 2 for 5. High to Reuter for ball one. The Cougs had a base runner in the first on a walk. He was stranded. Had two base runners in the second. A double play. And one stranded. And here in the third now, a hit by pitch and a walk and two aboard. Two gone for Reuter, who takes 2-0. and oh. so There's been traffic, and Cooper Vest got as far as third in the second inning, but he was left there. 6 nothing Bears. BYU trying to get one of three in this weekend series. The 2-0. 3-0. Oh. McKinney losing it a little bit, and now we see activity in the Baylor bullpen. Left-hander R.J. Rue is warming up. And they may need him sooner than later. That's a four-pitch walk of Reuter. Bases loaded with two out for Cooper Vest. And BYU could get right back in the game with one swing of the bat. So two outs via strikeout for McKinney. So he's cruising along here in the third. Then a walk, a hit by pitch, and another walk. And now it's a mound visit from pitching coach James Leverton. Rue, the southpaw warming in the Baylor pen. We've not seen Rue yet in this series. He's made 11 appearances on the year, including two starts. The challenge right now is for McKinney to get out of this inning. After two quick outs, three straight base runners on free passes. And Cooper Vest, with seven home runs on the year, including one in this series, comes to bat. He's one for seven. That one hit was a solo home run on Thursday. Cooper Vest, a lefty bat against the righty, McKinney, the matchup the Cougars would want with the bases loaded. Cooper Vest looking for his first base hit of the year with the sacks stacked. Coop is 0 for 1. Just one look with the bases loaded this year. And ball one high. So Coop's 0 for 1 with the bases loaded. BYU is a team coming in two today. 298 with the bases loaded. And popped up. Back out of play. 1 and 1 to Coop. BYU last night grounded into a double play with the bases loaded to end the seventh. Cooper hammers that to left center, and it will be off the wall and the fielder at the wall. Coop will slide into third and clear the bases with a three-run triple. That was drilled to the power alley and left. And Johnson over was in position to make a catch, and it bounced off the wall, and then his head, I think, at the wall. 
And Coop ends up with a triple. Three score on the play. Scow from third. Jones from second. Reuter from first. And just like that, it's a whole new ball game. 6-3, Baylor leads it. McKinney facing Kuhio Aloy with Cooper Vest on third. This all with two outs. Two strikeouts for McKinney. Then a walk, a hit by pitch, a walk, and a three-bagger. Three RBI triple for Cooper Vest. 1-0 the count to Aloy. Aloy grounds it foul to the BYU dugout. That changed this game in a hurry. Cuts the Baylor lead in half. And that was BYU's first hit of the game was that Cooper Vest triple to left center. 6-3 Bears. BYU getting back in this. Aloy with a base hit will score Cooper Vest. That gets down inside the left field line. Kohiwa Aloy will round first. He'll dig in for two and have a stand-up double. A triple and a double in back-to-back plate appearances. Cooper Vest and Kohiwa Aloy, 6-4 ball game here at Miller Park. Things have changed in a hurry here in Provo. Colin McKinney looking to the dugout, looking to the pen, and wondering when this all comes to an end here in the third because he was sailing with two strikeouts to open the inning, and since then, the floodgates opening on three free passes and two extra base hits, and now Breiker Herdsman bats in a 6-4 ball game, and he's the tying run at the plate with Kohio Aloy at second. Take strike one does Herdsman. RBI double for Kohio Aloy, BYU's RBI leader on the year. Breiker fouls to the backstop. Kuhio now with 25 runs batted in on the season. Aloy one for two, uh, one for one today with a base on balls and an RBI. Coop one for one with a base on balls and three RBI. The five six hitters getting it done for the Cougs. Herdsman grounded into a six four three DP in the second. The 0-2, and he fouls the fact it's a piece of it, stays 0-2. Baylor had a 6-0 lead, and two out here in the third. Scow walked, Jones was hit, Reuter walked, Vest triples, Alloy doubles, 6-4 ball game. Four runs on two hits for BYU. Rue remains warming in the Baylor pen. Working first base side of the rubber, McKinney. Glances back at second and comes plateward inside on Herdsman for ball one. Fastball at 94, missing in tight. The 1 2 with two gone, one on, tying run at the plate in Herdsman. High for ball two. That was nearly a grand slam for Cooper Vest, by the way. That was a triple off the wall in the power alley and left is off the fist. Herdman fouls it back to the netting. Stays two and two. Off the barrel, I was thinking grand slam, and it ended up going about nine feet up that 10-foot wall. The wall graduates in height from 12 to 10 to 8 feet from left to right across the field. That was about nine feet up. The 2-2, breaker stays high, count full. McKinney laboring to get out of the third. As R.J. Rue stays active in the Baylor pen. McKinney gets out of it on a high fastball that Herdsman swings under for strike three. But BYU in the third scores four runs on two hits. There were no errors and one left on board. We go top four. Baylor six, BYU four on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.